For the safety of your smile, use Pepsodin twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. Tonight, Pepsodent brings you The Pepsodent Show, starring Bob Hope and his special guest, Jimmy Durante. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Bob broadcasting from NBC again. It's been a long, long time, Hope. Telling you whether you're a soldier or a civilian, if you see a girl that's well stacked like a deck and you'd like to neck, use Pepsi to buy heck and you'll have her spellbound like Gregory Peck. <laughs> well, here I am back in Hollywood. Hollywood, that's a local expression meaning mob jam packed. And I don't care if you do want to shop on the fifth floor, go back down and come up inside the building. <laughs> nice to be back, and the whole NBC staff turned out to welcome me back today. Everybody, everybody from the office boy down. And it was a wonderful reception. <laughs> it was a wonderful reception. The crowd went wild and actually threw themselves at my feet. I'm still trying to find out which one of them tied my shoelaces together. <laughs> And, of course, as soon as I stepped out of the car, I was mobbed by autograph hounds. You know what an autograph hound is. That's the guy that runs up, grabs you by the collar, shoves a leaky fountain pen under your nose, and says, hmm, up close you ain't so much. <laughs> and it's really been a busy week. I attended the Betty Davis marriage. I always find my postcards go like hotcakes at those affairs. <laughs> and, and Betty... <laughs> And Betty was so happy she cried I don't know how long Betty cried But ten minutes after the ceremony started The place was knee deep in rice pudding <laughs> I had a wonderful view of the first part of the ceremony Then my fingertips slipped off the windowsill <laughs> But I'm really thrilled to be back in town Hollywood Boulevard looks so pretty as Santa Claus Lane Santa Claus Lane That's a slight transformation that occurs to Hollywood Boulevard every December So that it looks like one of Orson Welles' nightmares With Monty Woolley wandering through it <laughs> They had a big parade at the opening Santa Claus led the parade with a big pack in his back W.C. Fields was next He had quite a load too <laughs> And uh, They wanted W.C. Fields to be Santa Claus But it didn't work out Every time he exhaled His whiskers caught fire <laughs> No fear of that joke catching on fire But it was a wonderful parade But I'm still looking It was a <laughs> wonderful parade But I'm still looking for the guy who tore a phone book Into little pieces and then threw the city directory <laughs> They wanted W.C. Fields to be Santa Claus But it didn't work out Every time he exhaled his whiskers caught fire <laughs> That's the one that started my downfall right there. <laughs> Always have to have a little egg in the middle, don't you? Really? <laughs> what a parade. Unfortunately, Santa's sleigh stopped in front of the theater where Lost Weekend is playing. In five minutes, both of the reindeer's eyes were bloodshot. <laughs> I wanted W.C. Fields to be Santa Claus, but it didn't work out every time he exercised. <laughs> I thought I'd sneak that in while you were in good humor. <laughs> but I've never seen such a crowd. My brother got into the crowd on the sidewalk for about $600, and I don't think... <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen so many kids so happy. It was like the night out at Crosby's when his gang heard Sinatra hit that flat note. <laughs> I'll get it. I'll get it right here. Hello? 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 <laughs> Told you, should we, we should have gotten a joke to go in there. <laughs> Kelota, where are you? You're supposed to be here at NBC. Well, I hope this is the closest parking space I could find. But where are you, Kelota? Camp Roberts. <laughs> And uh, don't annoy me now Hope I'm busy kissing a whack Private? 
Well, not exactly. A couple of second lieutenants are taking notes. <laughs> ah, it's wonderful, Hope. She just kissed me first on one cheek, then on the other, then on the nose, and then on the chin. She kissed you on both cheeks, then on the nose, then on the chin. Why did she do that, Kelowna? I don't know. I guess she likes to beat around the bush. <laughs> That's it. Beat around the bush. Yes. <laughs> oh, well. A little better than driving your garbage truck. A lot of W.C. Fields to be Santa Claus, but it didn't work out. <laughs> hey, Kelowna, why does your head come to such a point? The sailboat in the water in my brain. What's your story? Uh, <laughs> Kelowna, don't be silly. How could you get a sailboat in the water in your brain? Big eardrum, small nephew. <laughs> I still think that's a good joke. Kelowna, <laughs> you know, if this program is a failure, I'm going to lay it at your doorstep. Okay, but it'll take a long time for it to hatch. Kelowna, <laughs> stop fooling around. Get here to Hollywood for the show. Okay, Hope, I'll have my friend Joe shoot me out of a cannon. Here I go into the barrel. Kelowna, that's impossible. No, it isn't, Hope. Okay, Joe, shoot me straight at Hollywood. Ready? Fire! Yes. <laughs> Glendale. <laughs> Kelowna, what happened? That Joe, he put a curve on me. <laughs> poor Miriam, poor Miriam, neglected using Miriam. Her smile did a flop at senior hop. Let's dance. Who, me? Not you. Oh, gee. So folks, don't be like Miriam, use Miriam. <laughs> no matter how many toothpaste you've tried... No matter how good a job you think your present brand is doing, change now to Pepsodent Toothpaste. And in just one week, see if you don't find new brightness in your teeth, new sparkle in your smile. You see, Pepsodent, and only Pepsodent, contains Irium, the exclusive cleansing ingredient. And Pepsodent Toothpaste with Irium removes the film that makes your teeth look dull. It loosens film and floats it away. Quickly, easily, safely. Because it removes film, Pepsodent toothpaste with irium brings new brightness to your teeth. No wonder more people than ever before use Pepsodent toothpaste today. So forget other brands you've tried. Change to Pepsodent toothpaste with irium. And in just one week, <laughs> see the difference. See if your teeth don't feel cleaner, look brighter. See how it uncovers the natural brilliance of your smile. Ask for refreshing Pepsodent toothpaste because Pepsodent and only Pepsodent contains irium. Dear Miriam, sweet Miriam, now she's using irium. Now the gal is up, that's senior hop. Let's dance. I'll say. Let's play. Okay. So folks don't be like Miriam, use irium. Ladies and gentlemen, Friday, December the 7th is free movie day in 16,000 theaters throughout the United States. Instead of buying a ticket, you will be admitted free by buying a victory bond. Our fighting men finished their job. How's about finishing yours? Go to your favorite motion picture theater Friday, buy your victory bond, and see that picture you've been waiting to see. Remember, Friday is free movie day, and here's Francis Langford. Come on. <laughs>
waiting for the one I adore. I'm waiting in the depot by the railroad track, looking for the choo-choo train that brings him back. Waiting for my life to begin Waiting for the train to come in That's the third one that's gone by Well, Robert has to be on the next one I'll finally see what the guy looks like That the USO asked me to write letters to Gee, he must be interested in me. He's been writing to me ever since I sent him my address and the stamp. <laughs> Gee, I hope he's handsome. In those snapshots he sent, I could never see his face through the bars. <laughs> I wonder if he's sitting on the train thinking of me. Gee, I'm almost there. I must be in love with Frances, all right. That's twice now I've spelled her name out in banana peels in the aisle. <laughs> Boy... I can't believe I'm finally going to see it, or I wonder if I should grease my hair down some more. I better not. It's dangerous hanging out the window and getting it off the axle. <laughs> I wish I could have found a really beautiful present to give her, but I'll get sick if I eat another box of those Cracker Jacks. <laughs> hey, see, there's a girl with a red carnation. Red carnation in her hair. That must be her. Francis! Guess I was a little over-anxious. <laughs> oh, hello. Gee, are you the man I've been riding to all this time? Sure, I'm the man. Don't you see the red rose? Yes, I see it. And now that we've met, you can take it out of your hair. <laughs> <laughs> so you're really Robert. Well, I sent you a picture of myself, didn't I? What are you so surprised about? Well, gee, in the picture, you've got a forehead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that was before my last GI haircut. <laughs> You'll like me better when you see more of me You mean you left some on the train? <laughs> <laughs> Say, you not only have lines, but you have lines <laughs> So you really like me, huh? Well, I ain't chewing on this railroad track because I need the iron in my system <laughs> <laughs> Say, I could, uh, but I knew you'd be a warm cookie I could tell by your letters how could you tell? Well, on all the airmail stamps, the pilot was out on the wing fanning himself. <laughs> Here's a little present for you, Francie. I was sitting behind a lady in the train that had some flowers, and I swiped a few of them for you. Thank you, Robert. They're lovely flowers. Yeah, it looked like a pretty expensive hat. <laughs> lucky, lucky for me, she got off at Hollywood. Oh, were you in Hollywood? Yeah, and I picked up a lot of fast stuff there. You did? Yeah, you want to chew some hot tar? <laughs> You two tar? Did you pick that up in Hollywood? Yeah, right off of Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> Your <Sure> dad. <laughs> well, what do you say? Are you, you and me going to get hit? Well, first of all, you, you, I'll have to let my father give you his approval. Go ahead, work it out. It's a half hour. <laughs> and a first... box of stickers to this one. <laughs> First of all, you'll have to get my father's approval. Bad lighting here. He came down. <laughs> he came down here with me to check up and see what kind of a man you were. I'll call him. Father, coming, coming, daughter. Dad, he got run over by the train, eh? <laughs> Soldier, I came to meet. Did you have any trouble finding him, daughter? No, I just looked around and there he was, standing on the platform. <laughs> More specific, which plank did he crawl out of? <laughs> Father, you don't understand. This is Robert. What do you think I should do? Run! <laughs> oh, Father! Oh, don't cry, don't cry, daughter. He may not be much to look at, but he's a man. You are a man, aren't you? <laughs> oh, yeah, well, you can laugh, but I may go into pictures. Oh, Robert, I'm afraid you wouldn't have a chance. Leave him alone, daughter. After all, Lassie made it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fine way to talk to me. I was just going to ask for your daughter's hand. Which one? <laughs> no, I'm serious. 
Well, this isn't a water pistol I've got here. <laughs> Tell me, do you have any money? Well, after all, two can live as cheaply as one. Well, that's fine. But the, what are you going to live on? <laughs> well, I guess we can use you on the farm. The hired man drinks too much. He drinks too much? Yes, every time he milks the cow, he brings the pail back empty. <laughs> oh, Father, then you give your consent? Yes, daughter, I give my consent for you two to marry until death do you part and let no man come between you. <laughs> That Tommy Manville really works fast, doesn't it? <laughs> and here's Skinny Anna, singing just a little song. Of play. Well, I do. <laughs> Skinny Anna will be here next week. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mind if I cut in? He was thin, wasn't he? <laughs> despite years of faithful brushing, despite any other toothpaste you've tried, see if your teeth are noticeably brighter in just one week after you change to Pepsodent toothpaste. You see, Pepsodent toothpaste contains irium, the exclusive cleansing ingredient. Pepsodent toothpaste with irium removes the film that makes your teeth look dull. It loosens film and floats it away quickly, easily, safely. Brings new brilliance to your teeth. So forget other brands you've tried. Change to Pepsodent toothpaste. And in just one week, see the difference in the brightness of your teeth, the sparkle of your smile. Ask for refreshing Pepsodent toothpaste because Pepsodent and only Pepsodent contains irium. <laughs> Now she's using Miriam. Now the gal is stopped at the senior hop. Let's sing. I'll sing. Let's 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 sing. let us sing 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 Ladies and gentlemen, during the past few years, I've gotten a little out of touch with the goings-on here in Sid Stroh's Hollywood Studios. So tonight, I've invited an old friend to come down here to give me a few pointers. Hollywood's most polished man about town and social leader, Mr. Jimmy Durante. Here he is. Thank you. Thank you, peasant. <laughs> How are you, Robert? How are things with the hoi polloi? You know, I'm here to brush you up on that there society there. Oh, are you sure you're an authority on the subject? <laughs> do, do you doubt my integrity? Why, I'm one of the 400. And what do the other 399 have to say about it? They keep screaming, everybody wants to get into the act. <laughs> uh, so you're the crumb in the upper crust, huh? I'm telling you, Robert... I'm on page one of who's who under what's that. <laughs> <laughs> so you're really a blue blood. Are you Justin? My blood is so pure, my corpus will sing melancholy baby. It's <laughs> <laughs> a funnier joke if you said blue like it's on the paper right there. I oh, only uh, read what's on the paper. Why should you be able to read tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Follow along in our pattern. Do you mean to say you remember the... <laughs> Do you mean to say you remember the horse he said, Jimmy? Indubitably. Your ticket. <laughs> Indubitably. You're yeah, talking yeah. to one of the fellows of society, if I may coin a phrase. Oh. <laughs> well, if you corn that one, you'll get five years for counterfeiting. Would like get him on the wreck stall. <laughs> Too early to get your plug in. What are you doing? <laughs> Sell Pepsi, but though I forget. But I'm really amazed, Jimmy. But I'm really amazed, Jimmy. You knew nothing about society when I left town. Knew nothing? Why, well, I'm the one who taught Emily to post. <laughs> I... <laughs> I cured the cotton in Elsa's Maxwell. <laughs> That's the one I told you to take up. <laughs> 
And I'm the blue blood who put Hilder on our guard. <laughs> Why, well, well, I <laughs> right there. <laughs> Why, while the Duke of Westchester was away, I hobnobbed with the Duchess. And when the Duke returned, he played hob with my knob. <laughs> Durana, you mad fool, you. <laughs> oh, you impetuous Maxie Rosenblum. Say, I'd like to... <laughs> I'd like to go to one of those social affairs with you, Jimmy. Well, as luck would have it, Bob, I'm going to a shindig, the caviar and crumpet set of sauce in the Pasadena tonight. It's very exclusive, but I'll take you along regardless. <laughs> How soon can you be ready to leave? In five minutes, Jimmy Did you say this is in Pasadena? Yes, that's make it, right Make it in ten minutes It'll take me a little time to find my Hoover button Okay, uh... y'all <laughs> Well, here we are, Bob Ain't it a big, beautiful house? Yeah, hide the bicycle in the shrubbery and let's go in <laughs> Where's the doorbell? There ain't any Here's the way you do it in these big, ritzy joints Anaconda Copper! Uh, good evening, sir. Come in. Uh, Miss Van Langford's uh, domicile. And your father's mustache to you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here is your hostess, uh, presenting Miss Frances Van Langford. Oh, how ecstatic you could come. Oh, this is nothing. <laughs> I just had to meet you theatrical people. You see, I was on the stage early in my career. Who was driving, Wells or Fargo? <laughs> Bob, Bob, Bob. I'll show you how to be ritzy. Oh, Francis, I'm just too charmed to be at your party. It's a delightful affair. Rally, it is. <laughs> Rally. Oh, thank you, James. You're just two, two, two. You know, James, I had a very thrilling experience today. I touched Van Johnson. Yeah? Well, how much? <laughs> they tell me, uh, Miss Van, are you really one of them debutantes? Well, I am coming out. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, just think before you... <laughs> Champagne, Mr. Durandy. Oh, I may have a slipper or two. <laughs> Do you always drink champagne from a slipper? Yeah, but only if the girls have water on the knees. Why? Well, that way I get a chaser, too. <laughs> I wonder if we could possibly persuade Mr. Durandy to play the piano for us. Well, I'll get him another stool. <laughs> well, I picked out this little number specially for this party. It's very highbrow. Stop the music! Stop the music! Stop the music! What kind of a piano is this? It's a side way, Mr. Durandy. Well, get your sign out of the way. This is going to be a solo. <laughs> I was sitting at my piano the other day, but my mind was ill at ease. They were coming to take it away that afternoon. <laughs> I was all by myself in a mellow mood, improvising symphony. My right hand was playing Mozart's Minuet, and at the same time, my left hand was playing the half an hour from Carmen, and at the same time, my mouth was whistling the sextet from Luigi. And while all this was going on, what do you think my foot was doing? While keeping time, it was cracking walnuts. <laughs> you see, I had to eat too. <laughs> then, in the midst of my sick full of queen, a strange feeling came over me. <laughs> My right hand stopped playing. My left hand stopped playing. My mouth stopped whistling. And my foot stopped cracking the walnuts. Food became secondary. <laughs> Why? Because, ladies and gentlemen, I found it. I found it. The lost cause. <laughs> That's it. The lost cause. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I found a chord. Go out and find your own chord. <laughs> so let's celebrate. I'm feeling great. I'm the guy that found the lost chord. That's it. <laughs> I'll have my name in the Hall of Fame chord. I just went and found that chord. It hasn't changed. <laughs> <laughs> 
Everyone knows Tchaikovsky wasn't recognized for 200 years. Bombers wasn't recognized for 300 years. Beethoven wasn't recognized for 400 years. I can't wait that long. I've only got two changes of clothes. <laughs> so let's celebrate. I'm feeling great. I'm the guy that found the lost cause. You know, it wasn't easy finding that lost cause. Working in my attic, I didn't sleep for days and days. I'd have been in terrible shape if I hadn't have slept nights. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, how I struggled. I worked my brain to the bone. First, I put an H flat with a B minor. Then I put a B minor with an F major. Then I put an F major with a B minor. Then I tried an A and a B and a B and a G and a G and an E and an E and a D and a D and a B and a B and a B and a D and a G. What a piano, no apostrophe. People said I was mad. But that didn't discourage me. They said Mozart was mad. They said Pacini was mad. They said Louis was mad. Who was Louis? My uncle. He was mad. <laughs> Soon my efforts bore fruit and I found it. The lost call. <laughs> Music clubbers, do you realize what you're hearing? I'll play it again. That ain't the chord. Neither is that. Neither is that. Neither is that. What happened to it? I lost the chord. Lock the doors. Nobody leaves the joint until the court is returned. <laughs> Call out the cops. Call out the Marines. Call out the Air Corps. Call for Philip Morris. <laughs> Philip Morris? Everybody wants to get into the act. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to sit down on the keyboard of this piano until the court is returned. That's it. The lost chord. I found it. I found it by sitting on the piano keyboard. I'll try it again. Very strange. I usually play by ear. <laughs> so let's tell the break. I'm the break. I'm the guy that found the lost chord. The memory of war bonds bought before that helped to win the war. But now it's one, let's win the peace by buying one bond more. And we thank you so much. And thanks for the memory of all the bonds you keep and profits that you reap. To those who lost their lives, the cost was surely not that cheap. And we thank them so much. They want to thank Jimmy Durante very much for being with us tonight. And I'll see you on the Rexall Show soon, Jimmy. And all you people in Phoenix, Arizona, we'll be seeing you at the gigantic Victory Loan Show next Tuesday night in Phoenix, Arizona. It's been fun doing the show for the civilians for a change. And folks, I'd like to take a second to toss an orchid to the American civilian for the job he and she did in this war. You know... Plenty of civilian men in overalls and civilian girls in blue jeans sweat plenty of sweat to turn out the stuff that put Eisenhower in Berlin and MacArthur in Tokyo. And many a civilian has a little button that says, I gave a pint of blood, and in many a case, it's a gallon. And what about those women who met and still meet the troop trains and make with the coffee and sandwiches? What wonderful women they are. All they ask in return is a sailor's hello, mom, or to watch a chow hound put a dent in their home cooking. And those GI wives, what an outfit they are, as strong as your best armor division. Those Army and Navy wives took from two to four years of loneliness with less griping than here in a separation center. Many of them divided their time between the assembly line and caring for little G.I. Joe Jr. But this war was a family affair. There were 12 million men in uniform, and backing them up were 120 million civilians at home. And speaking of those 120 million civilians, as the B-29 pilot said over the intercom, brother, what a ground crew. Good night. <laughs> Presented Bob Hope, broadcasting from Hollywood, California. This is Wendell Niles reminding you to change to Pepsodent toothpaste. For Pepsodent and only Pepsodent can change this period.